What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I got a special video as I am reacting to your hot takes. I put out this post on my community tab asking for you to submit some of your movie hot takes. And today I'm going through a bunch of them that I picked out and also I did a live stream. If you guys sent in your super chat hot take there, it will 100% be in this video. So this is gonna be a fun one. There's about 30 plus hot takes I'm going through here. It's gonna get spicy, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Before I get into all these hot takes, drop some of your movie hot takes in the comments down below. Hit that like button and consider subscribing and hitting that notification button. I'm trying to hit my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. Without further ado, let's just dive right into some steaming hot takes. Starting out with the super chats from the live stream I did the other night. Jason Cruz, the man, sent in a super chat saying, Forrest Gump is very overrated. In parentheses, not bad. I think Forrest Gump is an all-timer, and I don't think it's at all overrated. I think it is a properly rated movie. It won Best Picture at the Oscars, and I think that's fair. Granted, it was up against Shawshank and Pulp Fiction. So, like, if any of those three movies had won, like, say Pulp Fiction had won, people would be like, oh, it's overrated. Forrest Gump should have won. Or if Shawshank won, people would have said the same thing. It's all, like, in retrospect, one of those three movies had to win because they were the best three movies of the year. And Forrest Gump just so happened to be the one that took home the award. I love the movie. I have fond memories of watching it growing up, and I think it's proper. Rated. I think a lot of people have it high on all time lists, and I think that's valid. I don't think it's overrated personally, but I do like how I said it's not bad, because it's not a bad movie. The next super chat is from Ben Maloney. He says, hot take, Top Gun Maverick is the best sequel of all time, slash Ant-Man 1 is the most underrated MCU movie. So I'll address the back half of that hot take first. I agree, Ant-Man is probably the most underrated MCU movie. The first one is just a blast. In fact, it's a top 10 MCU movie for me. Like, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's cute, it's Ant-Man, but legitimately a great movie. So I will agree with you there. It is very underrated, underrated appreciated more so. In terms of the first part of your hot take, Top Gun Maverick is the best sequel of all time. I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but I will put it in the conversation of one of the greatest sequels of all time. Like, it might be a top 10 best sequel ever, but I'm not going to dismiss a movie like Empire or The Dark Knight, but Top Gun Maverick is elite. It's my favorite movie of last year. It is no doubt a top 10 sequel of all time, but the best? I can't go that far. The next super chat hot take is from Elias Word, who says, hot take, Watchmen is better than The Dark Knight. I think this is a piping hot take, because on the one hand, The Dark Knight is regarded as arguably the greatest comic book film of all time. Watchmen, on the other hand, a lot of people haven't even seen. And no disrespect to Zack Snyder or any of that, but I haven't actually seen the Watchmen movie, so it's hard for me to fully address this. If Watchmen was on the same caliber as The Dark Knight, it would have been hyped up enough, and I would have seen it by now, if that makes sense. The next Super Chat hot take is from Kyle. He says, Thor Love and Thunder is the worst Thor movie. I agree 100%. I don't even know if this is a hot take at this point. I think that most people would probably agree that Thor Love and Thunder is the worst of the four Thor films. And don't you worry, we're going to talk about Love and Thunder later in this video. But moving on, the next Super Chat hot take says, my hot take is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is better than the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I think this is a very hot take because the first Guardians is a top tier MCU movie. We're talking top six, seven, possibly top five or three on any given day. I do, however, think Guardians 2, at least for me personally, I've sort of hopped on this train of being like anti-Guardians 2 without having given the movie a fair rewatch in quite some time. So I, I am gonna rewatch the movie next month in preparation for Guardians 3, and I think I'm gonna have a whole new appreciation for it. That happens sometimes with movies. I, I think I remember vividly watching Guardians 2 the opening day, and I dug it, and then I was like, that might actually be top 10 MCU, like 10 or 11 for me. At the time, there was a lot less MCU movies, by the way. I then, you know, didn't watch the movie for a while, and started talking to a bunch of people, and seeing things, and the consensus was, oh, it's not good, and so I kind of twisted my memory of the movie without having given it a proper rewatch. I think I'll appreciate it a lot more. I still don't think it'll be better than Volume 1. The next Super Chat Hot Take is from Alex Lopez, who says the 1980s is one of the worst First decades for film. <laughs> I think that in terms of, you know, the Oscar winning films, like Best Picture from the 80s, I have seen the least of probably, if we're talking 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. But in terms of impactful movies that have, are iconic as hell, I'm going to sit here and just rattle some off. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, that's three Indiana Jones films, Die Hard, Terminator 1, Aliens, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, E.T., Back to the Future, I mean, the list goes on and on. The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I mean, I could sit here forever. Hell, even Platoon came out in the 80s, that was a Best Picture winner. So I think the 80s is an incredible decade for film. I do think it took the least risks if we're comparing it to the 70s or 80s. A lot of people say the 70s is the best decade for films, you know? You got movies that took risks, they were darker. The 90s, sort of this resurgence with like uh, David Fincher making big hit films like Seven and Fight Club, The Matrix coming out, sort of restructuring the blockbuster and the big movie mindset, right? Well, the 80s was a lot of what we love. But the 80s, to me, is not one of the worst decades for film by any means. The next super chat hot take is from Landon yet again, who says, Hot take, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is better than Spider-Man 
Spider-Man 3. I don't know how hot this is, because they're both not the best Spider-Man movies. Uh, we'll talk about, I think, both of these actually later on in this video. But I still think if I was given the two movies, and it was like, hey, rewatch one of these right, right now, I'm going to take Spider-Man 3, because you've got Sandman. I love the dynamic between Harry and Peter in that film. You can laugh at Venom and the stupidity of it. The thing about Tasm 2 is it, it's got an incredible Gwen-Peter romance, but other than that, there's way too much going on with the villains, and I never really had the desire to rewatch that movie. So I can't say it's better than three. I think I still prefer Spider-Man 3, and I think it's probably a little bit of a better movie. So that does it for the super chat portion of this video. Thank you guys so much again if you did send a super chat on the recent live Q&A. I appreciate it a lot. And now I'm moving on to the hot takes from the community tab post that I originally posted. These are hand selected by me. Some of them are pretty spicy. Let's just say that. First one is from Vinny B. Home Alone 2 is better than Home Alone. I disagree, but I actually love Home Alone 2. They're both actually five out of fives on like my personal rating skill. I rewatch them both, or at least try to rewatch the second one each December. The first one is an automatic, but the second one I try and also watch every December. The first Home Alone is just, it's the perfect Christmas movie. It's a perfect movie. I can't say two is better because one created this template that two sort of followed, plus two does get a little too wild at the end. Like, I can suspend disbelief in the first movie, but in the second one when Marv is literally getting, like, electrocuted and the skeleton pops up, like, it's a little hard to buy in. I enjoy the fun New York setting and the holiday vibes. Even though they're both, in my mind, like, equal on a rating scale, I would take Home Alone 1 over Home Alone 2. This one's from Evan saying Spider-Man 3 is a great and underrated gem, so kind of going back to Spider-Man 3 we just talked about. I do think that it is a little underrated. People, again, sort of hopped on this hate train for it. It definitely is the weakest of the of the Raimi trilogy without question, but it still is a solid movie in my opinion. It's the, the weakest, it's a little too long, sort of uh, overstuffed with villains, honestly. They could have cut out Venom, just kept Sandman as the main villain, but I do think it's underrated. I don't know if it's like a gem, but I do think it's underrated. This is a long one, so uh, get your popcorn ready. This is from The Last Resident. I love Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes, it is a flawed movie and it is a mess at times, but I can't help but love it. It just feels like everything I want a Star Wars movie to be. It has twists that you don't see coming, a fun galactic adventure, great character moments between Rey and Kylo Ren, and an amazing third act. To me, Rise of Skywalker just represents everything I love about Star Wars, and it's my second favorite film of the franchise. What I'm about to say is not a personal attack on you, The Last Resident, and I appreciate the uh, hot take. This is just generally me speaking about the way I feel about the movie, so I'm glad that you enjoy that movie. I don't, and that's no secret at this point, so let me just address the points here from my point of view. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. I don't really think there was many twists or turns here because when they fake killed Chewie, I was like, he's not dead. When they were gonna wipe 3PO's memory, I was like, you're just wasting our time here. It was lacking charm. At this point, it almost feels like the actors are kind of drained. Rey and Kylo had some decent moments here. I just can't stand how it makes zero sense that Palpatine came back. None. I'll argue that to the grave. It makes no sense that Palpatine came back. Somehow, Palpatine returned. There's literally a line in the movie acknowledging the stupidity of it all, so I just don't get it. It's my least favorite Star Wars film, and it's not particularly close, but I know people like it, and more power to you. Circling back to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a really good movie and underrated. It has, in my opinion, the best web swinging in all the Spider-Man movies, and the action is great as well. I think it has some, the best web swinging for sure, like the POV shots of Spidey swinging through New York are amazing. The score is wonderful, and uh, the action is badass too in the final act. I just think the movie as a whole is fairly forgettable. Like, there are standout moments, but the actual movie, kind of a mess. The whole Goblin storyline, Electro, it's, there's too much going on, unfortunately. I do love Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. He's my favorite, probably, at the end of the day. I think he's the best Spider-Man. But the movie itself, I can't just, I can't look past it. It's pretty forgettable and, like, a drag when I watch it. The movie opens with, like, his dad on a plane. It's very strange. Very strange opening for a Spider-Man movie. Next one is from Fear the Deer. Bullet Train is an elite-level action film. That's a fact. This movie's overhated. I know a lot of people were like, it sucks when it came out. Rules. I've seen it three times it is uh it's an elite action movie i 100 percent agree we don't get these ensemble type movies like this anymore where the cast is just having a blast there's kick-ass action from start to finish it is great next one is from ben at meters reviews everyone go subscribe i'll put uh his link up above help him get 2,000 subscribers it'd be awesome alien 1979 is a snooze fest i disagree ben i think that it is a damn great horror slash sci-fi film i've only seen it once but i do own it on blu-ray i was riveted from the start here just because there was this sense of impending doom looming over my head as i watched the movie I felt like it was just a slow burn building up to something horrific happening, and sure enough, something 
awful happens and that sort of incites this almost slasher in a way. So I really love that movie. Granted, I've only seen it one time, but I can see how the first hour can drag a little bit, 100%. So I, I see where you're coming from for sure, Ben. Next one's from Alex Lopez. I think The Phantom Menace is the best Star Wars film since the original trilogy. I disagree, but I will definitely acknowledge the fact that The Phantom Menace is overhated. Nostalgia plays a huge part in that for me. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I grew up with the prequels and the original trilogy, so I've seen this movie a hundred times, but it's flawed. <laughs> it's very flawed. I think Revenge of the Sith is a better film. Hell, I would argue that Rogue One and Solo are probably better than The Phantom Menace. The Force Awakens is probably better too, so I don't know. In terms of pers personal ranking, it might actually be higher than all the movies that I just mentioned. Like, there's no denying, in my opinion, that The Phantom Menace is overhated and o a little underrated. It's not the best since Return of the Jedi. I think there's better stuff. Next, we've got Toxic Gamer 331 with a toxic take. I'm just playing, but Up is only good because of the opening scene. No disrespect here, but I just don't like this take from, I've heard it a lot, by the way, so it's not just you, but like people will always be like, Up sucks after the first 10 minutes, and I'm always like, no, it's perfect after the first 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes hook you into Carl Fredrickson, and it breaks your heart, and you feel for this guy, so it's perfect setup and characterization for him, and then over the course of the movie, he goes on this adventure that Ellie would have always wanted, you know, adventure is out there, and then by the end of the movie, he's like got a new lease on life, like he has a new appreciation for the little things through Russell. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking, but it's beautiful. And I think that the adventure in that film is, is felt. There's a great twist in the movie. There's lovable characters like Doug. I think people are really too harsh on the rest of the movie. Like, obviously, the first 10 minutes could have stood alone as an Oscar-winning short film. And I, I never understood the hate for the latter half of the movie. That's just me, though. We got another hot take here from a username that is too long to read. <laughs> no Way Home isn't great on rewatch. Here's what I'll say about that. I've seen the movie seven times. Seven. And there's no denying the fact that each time you rewatch the the film, it loses a little bit of that original oomph, that, that audience reaction factor, but I still think it's a great movie on rewatch. Like, the original adrenaline rush of seeing Toby and Andrew on screen with Tom, that's gone, but it still feels special, and I still think it's a damn great movie that a lot of people have sort of turned on. I still love it. I'll always love that movie. I mean, the only thing for me that I've noticed on rewatch is that the first hour is a little slow and uh, takes a little too long to get going, but the last hour and a half is perfection. This one's from Gavin Cole. It says, Jaws 2 is way better than the first. Jaws is one of the best films of all time. Tried to sit through Jaws 2 once, I just couldn't do it. Jaws basically created the shark movie. <laughs> there are so many movies have tried to rip that off, but Jaws is an all-timer. It's one of Spielberg's best, and uh, I would have to say I strongly disagree. This one's from Ellen Rocky. Star Wars prequels are better than the original trilogy. They're not in my opinion, but I do love the prequels, so I'll give you that. I think the original trilogy of Star Wars is one of the best trilogies of all time. It's my personal favorite. The Dark Knight trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and the original trilogy of Star Wars are like the three perfect ones to me. I would have to say that I disagree, but I love the prequels. No prequel hate for me. This next one is from my boy Jacob over at Star Court Food Court. He has multiple hot takes, but I'm just gonna pick one. He says the Batman is overrated. It hurt me. You're hurting my heart. <laughs> no, uh, I love the Batman. It's my favorite Batman film. Perhaps my favorite DC film of all time. I know a lot of people do say the movie's overrated. I disagree. I think that it is very properly rated. It is a spectacle to behold on the big screen, and it's the first time, really, cinematically speaking, that we got a detective Batman on the big screen where it was a darker thriller as opposed to more comic booky. Um, I know The Dark Knight was a darker movie, literally, for Batman, but this one felt more detective. We're seeing him pull up to crime scenes and solving this mystery throughout, and I thought Paul Dano as a Riddler was an incredible villain, so all around, this one really worked for me. It's a movie that caters to me. This movie really showed a gross side of Gotham City. Robert Pattinson is the man. This one's from Cam Cam. Thor Love and Thunder is worse than Dark World Eternals. I told you guys we'd circle back to Thor Love and Thunder, didn't I? This is not a hot take to me. This is a fact. It is the worst MCU movie. It's the bottom of my MCU ranking. It sucks. It's unwatchable at this point. I've seen it twice. I'm good for life. Eternals and Dark World are both more watchable. Dark World has the Loki brotherhood relationship. Eternals has some fascinating new characters. Thor Love and Thunder has nothing to offer but painfully unfunny jokes. This one's from Ethan. The Tasm movies are better than the Tobey Maguire movies. I think that's a very hot take because I think Spider-Man 1 and 2 are top tier Spider-Man movies all the time. They're just perfect, you know? I, I love those movies. But Tasm movies, they're not better in my opinion. I think you could argue if this said, you know, Andrew's better than Tobey as a Spider-Man, I would say, yeah, probably. But the Tasm movies, to me, they're just not. I, I think the Tobey trilogy, there's something about it. There's a magical, nostalgic feeling about it. But also, better villains and 
Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin and Melina's Doc Ock and Sandman. More iconic moments, I would argue as well. He takes more brutal beatdowns too in those movies. So I just like the Toby trilogy better. This one's from Keanu with a wild take. Cars 2 is better than Cars 1. I don't see it. Cars 3 is the best. Is that a hot take? Cars 2 is like a bottom tier Pixar movie. It's just so painfully dumb to sit through and just not good. But Cars 1 is okay. Cars 1 is actually overrated. I think a lot of people agree it kind of is okay. Cars 3 is the best. This is from Got Milk. This is kind of piggybacking off of what I just said about The Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker is my favorite Star Wars movie, and I don't like Empire Strikes Back. <sighs> Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, obviously, but this is a take that itches my brain. Empire Strikes Back is a it is a perfect movie. It's not my favorite Star Wars movie, but it's a top three Star Wars movie. It's not in someone's top three. If it's not in someone's top five, actually, I would love to sit down and pick their brain as to why. Rise of Skywalker is the worst Star Wars movie to me. Man, that movie, I don't know. I don't know what people see in it that like it. I just don't, and I, I don't know if I ever will be able to understand that, and that's totally fine. Good Lord, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Okay. This is from Movie Fan 2002 with the Luke Skywalker from Battlefront profile pic, it looks like. Sick. I think Onward is Pixar's overrated movie. I think he misspelled underrated because no one talks about this movie. It is elite, in my opinion, the top 10 Pixar film, and no one's highly rating this movie. It, no, no one's seen this movie, I feel like. Everyone just swept it under the rug because then the pandemic hit like the day it came out and just went to Disney Plus, and it's like the forgotten Pixar movie. It is underrated highly, in my opinion, so I disagree. This is from Scrummy64. Temple of Doom is the best indie movie and it's a hill I'm willing to die on. It's the third best indie movie. How about that? <laughs> Look, no indie movie, even five, which I'm I'm pumped for Dial of Destiny. Nothing will ever top Raiders. That is like one of the greatest adventure films, hell, films alone of all time. Last Crusade is extremely close. If Dial of Destiny can be the third best indie movie, that's high praise right there. Temple of Doom is good. I, I really like Temple of Doom, but I'm not gonna lie to you. It's way too cheesy at times. There's a whole dinner table scene where they're eating exotic foods. It's like, what are we doing here? There's literally a moment where they jump out of a plane and they land on like a raft and it was just like on a mountain. Like they would be dead, but I, I'm just saying, those are little nitpicks. Temple of Doom's fun. It's the darkest without question. I mean, this movie is dark. It has some messed up but I still like it. It's just not the best to me. This next one's from my boy Trevor over at Film Geeks. Everyone go subscribe to Trevor. He's the man. He says, Creed 2 is the best Rocky Universe movie. I disagree, but I do like Creed 2 a lot. I don't think that's a crazy take. I think Creed 2 is like fifth on my ranking, fourth or fifth. I'd put Rocky above it, Rocky 2 above it, and Creed above it. Possibly Rocky 3 over it, but Creed 2 is still top five, I would say. It's hard to top the classic original Rocky. Rocky 2 is a damn good follow-up. I think Creed is a better movie than Creed 2, but I do think Creed 2 is way better than Creed 3. I think Creed 3 is the weakest of the trilogy and one of the weaker overall Rocky Universe movies. But we're talking about one of the more consistently solid to amazing movie franchises out there in Rocky. So I respect the take. Alright, so I got a few hot takes left. We're gonna do a rapid fire with my man Rylan Reviews. Halloween 2018 is amazing, better than the original. Well, I don't think it's amazing, but you could argue it's better than the original. It might be more rewatchable and entertaining. I really love Adam Sandler's Anger Management. In fact, it's my favorite of all his comedies. Haven't seen it, so I can't answer it, but I think that's a movie with Jack Nicholson, so maybe one day I'll watch it. At World's End over Dead Man's Chest. That's a hot take. Dead Man's Chest is arguably better than Curse of the Black Pearl. I love At World's End more than most people, but it's just too long at times and way too bizarre at times. Still love the movie though. Wakanda Forever is bottom five MCU. Wow. It's not bottom five for you. It's like 19th in my ranking or something like that. Out of like 31, by the way. But I do think it's a little overhyped. The Saw franchise is awesome and thoroughly well written in many moments. The Saw franchise rules. The first movie is one of the best horror movies I've ever seen, actually. It has one of the best twists out there. I enjoy a bunch of the sequels for what they are. It's like a guilty pleasure thing. Like, I watch them with the pretty much it commentary tracks, which makes the movies way more bearable and it adds a comedic presence to the movies. But they're very hard to just sit down and binge because of how disgusting they can be. But yeah, I think that it is fairly well written. They do retcon too much and it gets kind of a lot to keep up with and frustrating, but it is a pretty decent franchise, surprisingly. Batman v Superman is top tier DC and one of the coolest comic book films out there. I disagree. I don't think it's top tier DC. I also find the film rather boring on rewatch, but I do like the fight between Batman and Superman. And the last hot take here from Ryland. Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent is the second best comic book villain behind Heath Ledger's Joker. Wow. I do think that he definitely isn't appreciated enough because Heath Ledger steals all the spotlight, and rightfully so. Ledger's the standout of the movie, but I think that if like Eckhart as Harvey Dent was in any other film, people would appreciate his performance more. I will say he's probably not even a top 10 comic book villain for me. I just think Ledger blows him out, and that's the, the tough thing is they're both in the same movie, and Ledger steals all the spotlight from him. And the last hot take for this video from Joe. Please show mercy on me. I think Phase 4 is the best Marvel phase. Well, 
I disagree very strongly. I do think that it's clearly the weak link, and the reason being is it is the phase with the most hours of content to consume and somehow the least memorable pieces of content. Phase one, two, and three all have movies in my top 10, some in my top five, actually. Phase one has a top five movie. Phase two has a top five movie. Phase three has a few top five movies. The highest project for me is No Way Home, and that almost feels like an outlier. Next is like Shang-Chi, and then from there, there's a pretty big drop off. I liked some of the special presentations. It's cool that they sort of changed it up and went the TV route but a lot of the TV shows were forgettable, hard to watch at times, and boring. I equate phase four to when a football team hires a new coach and they're in the rebuild for a year or two. That's exactly what phase four was. I think that phase five is like, we're on track now. I think we're gonna get thing, the ball rolling again. I like Quantumania. We got Guardians 3 coming soon and some shows that look promising, you know, Loki season two, Secret Invasion. Phase four is the weakest. I mean, there's a lot of bottom tier projects. My least favorite show, my least favorite movie, Multiverse of Madness and Eternals are bottom MCU for me. Like a lot of middle of the road stuff too. The few great moments are far outweighed by a lot of mid to just bad projects, unfortunately. The special feeling of the MCU was just lacking, and a lot of it felt unnecessary, so that's why uh, Phase 4 is the weakest to me, by far. But that's going to conclude this video of me reacting to your movie hot takes. If you guys like this, let me know, and I'll do like a part 2 possibly with other fandoms or other movies or maybe TV shows. I had a lot of fun doing this. This is the type of video I like to do, very laid back, reacting to your takes. Drop some more of your hot takes down below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for some content coming very soon. Lots of exciting things coming as we get further into the year. Subscribe and hit that notification bell as I'm trying to hit my goal of 75,000 subscribers here on the channel. It'll mean a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>